Hello YouTube, Flight Some Guy here. I am back in the Leonardo MD80. This is my fifth video in the Learn the Mad Dog series. Today we're going to be talking about the guidance panel, or the autopilot, whatever you want to call it. Alright, so let's talk about the guidance panel. Alright, so essentially this is operations of the autopilot. I thought this aircraft would have been, the, uh, the I thought the autopilot in this aircraft would have been difficult or complicated to learn actually it's very very easy I'm gonna run through it real quick every aircraft has their own little quirks when it comes to operating the autopilot this one is relatively straightforward all right let's go ahead and go through the buttons on the guidance panel here you got your wing lights and you got your taxi lights here you have nav one the radio and the course for nav one here you have the flight director on off for the pilot FMS override these are your engine power controls. You can control it by speed, uh, Mach, and EPR limitations. Here you have your speed bug. And here you have the auto throttle on and off. Nav VOR localizer, ILS, auto land. And here you have your uh, heading hold. Here you have your vertical speed. And you have some more buttons here, vertical speed, um, uh, IAS, Mach, VNAV, we'll go over what all these mean. And you have your altitude hold and your autopilot master and your altitude and your flight director for the co-pilot and NAV2 and the course needle for NAV2. Alright, real quick. I'll run through this very fast. Alright, so here's how the autopilot works. Real quick. First thing you gotta do, turn on your flight director, pilot and co-pilot. And as you can see, these little, uh, uh, displays show up here. Essentially, this tells you what autopilot mode is in effect. All right. So once you take off, let's say you take off, you can go ahead and set your auto throttle on the outside. This changes your speed in knots. Click this red button, and this changes your speed in terms of Mach. Here it's 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.56. Know that it takes forever. There's no quick way to do this. On 23 and they're independent okay this selects speed right here this selects Mach right there EPR limitation that's just a, a, another way of saying you're gonna uh, manage the engine power by EPR instead of the actual speed auto throttle on and off once it's on the computer manages the power to the engines your little thingy right here moves back and forth automatically the auto throttle is not connected to the autopilot. You can turn off the autopilot and have the auto throttle on independently. Once the auto throttle is on and you have speed selected, you can go ahead and use this to manage your speed. You want to do this at lower altitudes. At higher altitudes, have it at Mach. And then you can change your speed with regards to Mach. If you're going to fly with a flight management computer, once everything is set up and activated and you've verified your route, there's a separate video on my channel with regards to setting up the flight management computer once everything is uh, in order what you want to do is move your aircraft so that you're somewhere near your uh, your route once you hit nav once you hit nav the autopilot is going to take commands from the flight management computer with regards to your lateral navigation okay so in other words, it's going to make left and right turns to follow the course based on your flight management computer. If you want the autopilot to manage your vertical profile, you hit VNAV. They say VNAV is on here. And what that will do is, based on whatever flight plan you have, the vertical profile with regards to what altitude you're going to be at what waypoint, the plane will automatically climb or descend to meet that altitude requirement. Okay, that's what VNAV does. I never fly with VNAV. I always manage my vertical profile by myself. Uh, reason being, I tried using VNAV when I was training on the uh, E-Jets and I would often stall the aircraft. So, no VNAV for me. VOR localizer. This mode says localizer. And what that means is it says VOR localizer. If you're doing VOR navigation and you want to track to a radial, you want to hit VOR, LOC, okay? And make sure that this is on rows. In my case, I'm in Norman Manley. 
So let's go ahead and set this to 115.5. That's the local VOR station. Let's just change. There it goes right there. Then I can go ahead and turn until this lines up. And like I said, there is... Turn that off. And like I said, there is no quick way to turn these knobs in this aircraft. I'm not sure why they did that. Keep turning. You all know how this works. Keep turning, turn turning. And as you can see, the distance is 0.4 miles because we are uh, at the airport on the field. And there it goes right there. So you want this engaged when you want to fly with the VOR. All right? Turn that off. This plane doesn't have approach hold. The approach hold doesn't have a button that says approach hold. The equivalent of the approach hold on this aircraft is ILS. You use this. Hit this if you want to capture the glide slope once you're riding the ILS down and you're doing a precision approach. You remember how that works, guys? You get into the ILS, okay? And then you go ahead and capture the localizer with nav. I'm sorry. In this case, you capture the localizer with this, with the VRR localizer. Nav simply tells you to take commands from the flight management computer. And then when you want to uh, lock into the approach, you hit ILS, okay? I've never ever used auto land on any aircraft, even if it's available. I don't see the point of it. It's a flight simulation. We want to do this our damn selves. I never use auto land. So if you want to figure out how that works, you're gonna have to look it up. Let's say you're flying along, and you're on you're on nav, and the compute the uh, autopilot is taking commands from the flight management computer, and ATC says turn left heading whatever. What you want to do is this turns your heading bug and left click pulls it out and then it goes to heading select so it ought it switched from getting commands from the flight management computer and now it's simply saying go where I say this goes you can right click and you can push when you left click when you left click it says Take whatever command, take your heading from whatever I put in there, okay? When you right click, it pushes. And what that means is whatever the heading is on, hold it. That's the heading you want. Left click, select. It's changing down here. Right click, push, hold, all right? Let's say you're flying along and you want to go from uh, altitude of 5,000 to 10,000. What you do is you dial in your destination altitude. And this right here, vertical speed, you hit that, it brings this alive, and then you can move this up or down to your vertical speed. Now, if you want to go up, I'm going to do that. Now, Boeing recommends, from all the Boeing manuals that I've read, you're not supposed to use vertical speed to go up or come down, okay? And using vertical speed in Boeings can be dangerous. When I first started flying Boeings, I was using the vertical speed to go up and down. And I didn't understand how best to uh, manage my, uh, my auto throttle with the vertical speed. And quite often, I would stall. But in watching a lot of videos on YouTube, a lot of the MD-80 drivers, they use vertical speed to go up and down. And what this does is, in this case, it's plus 2800. So what happens is your vertical speed will go to 2800 and the plane will go up in a climb. Having said that, you need to make sure that you have your right speed going so you don't stall. The higher you go, the lower, the higher you go, the less steep your climb can be because the air is thinner. And if you're cruising at 33,000 feet and you want to come down, you just go ahead and dial in whatever altitude you want to get down to and put put your, uh, your nose down with a vertical speed like here. And then you just hit vertical speed. Yeah. Hit vertical speed and dial in your descent rate and it shows up right here and the plane will start descending i like to climb at 2000 2200 2000 and as i get higher and higher i bring my climb rate down 1800 1600 1500 and by the time i reach my cruising altitude i'm about 500 uh, feet per minute when I'm coming down from cruise, depending on how close I am to the airport, I like to come down at about 2,600 feet per minute at about 0.68 Mach or 0.72 Mach. 
you can use vertical speed to manage your uh, ascent and descent. You just have to know what you're doing. If you have enough experience, it's not a problem. I use vertical speed all the time. This flight uh, guidance panel doesn't have a button that says flight level change. That's what this button is, IAH, indicated airspeed. Essentially, it's a flight level change. What it does is, if you're going down, you dial in your lower altitude, hit indicated airspeed, and what it's going to do is it's going to push the nose down to match whatever speed you have here. So if you have 0.62 Mach and you're cruising at point, say, proving, cruising at 0.78 or 0 0.80 Mach, hit indicated airspeed. Well, what you want to do is lower this first to whatever, you know, 0.68. Hit indicated airspeed, and what is going to happen is this is going to come back, it's going to idle, and then it's going to push the nose down until the plane speeds up to match whatever you have in your speed dial over here. All right, so essentially, this is your flight level change, but it's called IAS Mach. This is your VNAV. This allows you to fly a vertical profile as defined in the flight management computer. With VNAV engaged, the plane will automatically ascend or descend as needed based on what the route says in the flight management computer. None of what I just said matters unless you turn on the autopilot. This is your autopilot, and there are two autopilots, one and two. This is your altitude. Uh, in, the, uh, in the load manager configurator that comes with this aircraft, you can tell it to auto arm whenever you change altitudes. What that means is when you're changing altitude and you start approaching the altitude dial in here, it will beep at you and say, hey, you're almost at the altitude you want to get to. And if the autopilot is on, it's going to automatically level off at that altitude. If you deviate from the altitude that's in here, it's going to start beeping at you saying, hey, you're leaving the altitude that's in the autopilot. This is the flight director switch for the co-pilot side. Turn these up. And this is the uh, uh, NAV2 for the co-pilot and the course for the co-pilot. Couple other things really fast. This right here is your decision height. There is no quick way to spin this. I like to keep my decision height at 200. Decision height is largely dictated by the kind of airport you're going to. They'll tell you what the recommended decision height is, okay? Over here, this is your EFIS that you normally see uh, in the, uh, the Boeings. There's an EFIS over here, and there's a, also an EFIS over here. And what this does is, this changes and manages all the crap that you see down here. Okay, rows. That's for regular. That's for regular uh, hand VFR, you know, flying, looking around and whatnot. Because here you have access to your course needle and your heading bug. Oh, I forgot to mention with the heading bug, you can limit your bank angle. Once the autopilot is on and it's taking command from heading select, that limits your bank angle to 10 degrees, 15 degrees, 20 degrees, 25, and then tops out at 30 degrees. So if you want to navigate with uh, VOR navigation and ADFs, you want to use the Rose Arc, okay? This turns on and off your ADF needles. You have two sets of needles, one for ADF and one for VOR, okay? This Arc allows you to, to navigate with your VOR also, but it also opens up a window where you can see your navigates, airports, data, and whatnot. All right, now I'm in, uh, in Kingston, Jamaica. We don't have a lot of navigates here, but wherever you are, it'll actually show up all the navigates, waypoints, and whatnot. You all know what this is, right? Map, this is the map that you want when you're gonna be navigating with the flight measurement computer. You'll actually see your route on here. You can zoom in and out with this. On 60, 320, 80, 40, 20, 10, 5. This is plan. 
you want to go to the plan mode to validate the route that you have entered into the flight management computer. You've seen this in all the other FMS videos that I've done. Okay, so it's plan, app, arc, rows. And yeah, so this shows you all the stuff that you need here. And I think that's it. That's all you really need to know about the, the autopilot for this thing. There's a lot more behind it. Uh, you want to know what that, that is? You're going to have to research it yourself. If you want to see how this operates, just go ahead and fire this bad boy up, take off, go to about 20,000 feet, fly over an area where there are, you know, two or three, where you're within range, within two or three uh, VOR stations, and go ahead and play with it. But the truth of the fact is, this autopilot, this, you know, it's called a automatic flight guidance system. It's actually very straightforward. It's very easy to use. Not much to it. Easier than the ERJs, e easier than the E-Jets, easier than the Boeings. Very straightforward. And that's all I have. I uh, hope you guys found this video useful. My name is Flight Some Guy. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.